Hi. We're gonna try one more time. I think I am. Uh, I'm turning the right direction now. Let's see. Waiting for people to sign in. Hey, Chichana. So, am I turning the right direction? And can you hear me? Hey, Anna. Whoops. Ah, great, Maria. Awesome. Ah, trying to get comfortable here. On my, uh, in my. Cool. Hi, Isabella. So. So this week is Q and A. We're gonna do like this. We're gonna do it online, and um, I do have. Um, I do have questions sent per email. So while I'm waiting for you guys to write your questions, I will just read the question out loud and uh, come with the answers as well. Um, let me see. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you, Isabella. It is apparently my natural hair color. Ah, woo, this thing is falling down. I'm so. This is the first time I do it like this. I'm sorry. I have to get used to the whole uh, settings and stuff. Okay. So. I will see we got this list if I remember where I put it technical volume 2 um, <laughs> I'm doing my best guys really okay whoops ah, don't fall down okay great um, question number one I have this Ta -da! Question number one. I want to ask what is the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath of how to, and how to handle them? Uh, is it best to cut them out of your life? It feels so weird asking myself the questions. Uh, okay, I want to ask what is the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath? So it's two different mechanisms which is occurring in the people that sociopath in a, is a person um, who in social settings are not able to adjust um, and have a, a different perception of social settings, a different position of oneself and um, actually are not able to fully integrate in a social setting where on the other hand a psychopath is really good in this he just uh, <laughs> or he it she um, knows how to manipulate a situation into getting the outcome that he or she wants so the main difference between the two is that a sociopath is not good in social settings and a psychopath is actually very good in manipulating these social settings. Okay, we have our first online question from Anna. Uh, have you ever tried a Wasca magic mushroom? <laughs> and what do you feel about it? Ooh, hour of truth. Um, I did do ayahuasca five times. And my feeling was... Uh, I did it with the attention that I wanted to experience the deepest fear that I had, which at that point was the fear of being poisoned by drugs. So I wanted to get rid of the feeling or, or go through the fear of uh, being drugged. And um, for that, it, it really worked because for me, just drinking the ayahuasca itself, then I already went through that fear. The other times I did it, what I experienced was I was just mainly mostly myself. 
uh, I, I actually felt like I got a little bit more grounded <laughs> for the time being until it was gone and poof, I, I went away again. But for what my general feeling is that ayahuasca was created in order of helping humanity to get closer to spirit and oneself. Ayahuasca is a tool that has been around for centuries and it has been a great guidance and it has been a great gift and help for many people in many situations. What I do really believe is that it is with ayahuasca as any other tools that they should really be used for, uh, for that. So used as a tool for getting closer to oneself and not become a new substitute for a escape way out of your own world reality into um, yeah, to this other time frame where you lose yourself. Another thing I believe is really important that it is uh, conducted by a shaman. A shaman where that will guide you through the experience itself and then know how to guide you back to your heart every time. Because when you are flying away, which some people are doing on ayahuasca, um, you tend to get to see different uh, stages. And if you are not linked in your own body system, in your own uh, truth of what you need to experience in this moment, you can connect to other scenarios that doesn't necessarily have something to do with you, but maybe somebody within this room that you're part of. And it's really important that the shaman knows how to guide you through it and help you after the ceremony. So if you feel called to do ayahuasca, I, I am not against it at all. <laughs> we should always do what we feel called to do. Just make sure that it is a setting where it is true to its nature and you use it for your development and getting closer to spirit and self and not as I escape way. And about the magic mushrooms, no, I never tried magic mushrooms. We usually say that ayahuasca is like a very good grandmother and magic mushrooms or DMT is like, boom, knock out of yourself. So if you wanna, if, if you wanna feel, if you want the experience that was attended with these kind of substitutes, substance, you need to do it in um, in the right settings. Follow your heart always. And uh, let's see. <laughs> Guys, this is the first time I do it like this, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit out of it. Anouk, I love your name by the way. I am very curious cur I am very curious about how my son learns school and why he can sometimes work very slow and sometimes be very busy uh, in the classroom. So, <laughs> your son is a highly sensitive person and he uh, attempts to fly around a lot and it's not always centered within himself. If there's too many impulses surrounding him, um, it's hard for him to focus on one thing. Another thing is that if the subject there is uh, on, the, the, on the billboard, on the blackboard, uh, a whiteboard, I don't know what you call it. If the subject doesn't resonate within him in the part where he wants to learn this, um, it goes slow because he has to feel it, he has to connect to it. If he doesn't feel it, if he doesn't connect to it, it it's his brain that has to be an overwork and his brain is already in resistance. So his way of learning is to see, feel, and take in. So basically, uh, he only learns when he's interested for whatever reason. That makes, so, it, that makes it really hard because you can't really determine when or how to put the settings of what he wants to learn and what he does, doesn't want to learn. I can compare it a bit with my own childhood. Um, I couldn't read until I think it was third, fourth grade because it simply didn't say me anything. And my school teacher told me, well, you have to learn to read, you know. And I had these small pixie books where there was more pictures than there were words. And then I thought, okay, if I have to learn to read, 
what do you want to read about? And uh, I found these uh, books about witches, which was so thick and just letters, 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 no pictures. <laughs> and um, I think within a month, I learned to read fluently because it caught my attention. And uh, within that, um, I was able to learn what I needed to learn. But the, the, the whole thing of learning to read wasn't a thing. But the, the reading about this subject was what was for my drive. So for him is to realize what is his drive. But it will get easier. In this time in life, the best thing you can do is, is to support him in where he's at. Because he hasn't found himself yet. He hasn't found out himself and how he learns. And there's so many impulses, so it's, it's hard for him to it just take one thing from another. I hope this helped you a little bit. Um, Isabella, my question is, what is psychosis and is it, block, is it a block in the third eye? Okay, Isabella, is your question, what if a, is a psychosis? Is that your question? And are you asking if that is blocking the third eye? Uh, I just want to, I just want to make sure I'm answering the right thing. So I will uh, get back to that, uh, Isabella. Just uh, let me know what you meant. Um, Jacqueline, hi. What do you think about diagnosis? Well, <laughs> diagnosis are something that people... It's, it's a mark. It is something in order of describing who you are or what is wrong with you. Uh, the diagnosis that we have today, I don't believe that it's fully reflecting who you are. But for many people, it is a guideline to come a bit closer to understand on a mental level where you're at and what you're dealing with. I do not believe that you are your diagnosis, not at all. Um, personally, I have like seven diagnoses. On paper, I'm super crazy. <laughs> but it doesn't define who I am. It defined the moment that I was in, the moment that those diagnoses was given. Also, when in our systems i do believe that uh, we often handle it in a form where we try to normalize people <laughs> into a standard instead of finding out what the values is in these different personality disorder because a lot of sensitive people or a lot of spiritual open people um, are misunderstood when I look energetically, for example, now we can take the psychosis part, right? So when I look energetically at somebody with a psychosis, what I see is that they are not grounded within their own person, within their own being. But what they do is they perceive scenarios, energy forms surrounding them, and they are not able to see one thing from another. So they mix everything together and make it their reality. They make it as if uh, they become it, right? So what would be a beneficial way to deal with that is to get to be able to explain them the situation and help them ground within themselves, help them feel safe within themselves, help them to the part where they understand why they doesn't feel safe within themselves. Um, other diagnoses like ADHD, ADHD, which I obviously have, and uh, hyperactive, which I, of course, also have. Um, <laughs> it's just that, well, you can say technically that something is different in the brain waves. And I was born dead, for example, so uh, I was super hyperactive already from the start. But it doesn't mean that I am sick. It means that I function a bit different than reality, right? Or, or the main mainstream. Uh, it doesn't mean that I should be normalized. It means that I need to learn how to use the gifts that I have in the best way that makes me feel most free. And this goes with everybody 
who has this kind of diagnosis. I think that HDHD are these kind of kids or OCD or uh, artistic children are amazing because they perceive the world reality so differently and um, they bring a lot of new t new consciousness to our world and not of new perceptions to our world reality. If we look at some of the most brilliant people we have, like Albert Einstein, or uh, well, maybe not Nikolai Tesla, he was almost normal, but uh, Salvador Dali, or uh, Leonardo da Vinci, like these kind of guys, right? They are not normal on paper for sure. So my take on diagnosis is that it has been a guideline and we have had the need for it from where we were to where we came before diagnosis to actually um, acknowledge that there is like within things and not only physical stuff. So it was a great step. Now we have to take it a step further to include the whole spirit and combine it all as one. Isabella, you forgot my question. No, I didn't. Uh, Lau Lauri, I have a question about dreaming and sleep traveling. Sometimes I really feel physical sensation in my dreams and it feels uh, like it's, it's much more than just sleeping. Can you explain a bit about this? So it really depends who you are and what you're doing on your journeys. But when we, when we sleep, there is a lot of different functions going on. One thing is the part of you that actually are traveling out and become part of different world realities. The funny thing is that you are this whole day along, right? But when you are awake in this dimension, your focus is within this dimension. So all the traveling that you're doing at night is minimized and your focus on that traveling is minimized. When you are asleep, you leave your body, your body is restoring. And, uh, well, not fully, but a, a part of you are leaving the body. And you become more conscious of the realms, realms that you are traveling within. That is one thing. Another part is the subconscious are working at night. Everything that you're working on at day, which you do not give the focus that it requires, comes up in the evening so or in the night so that you emotionally can realign with yourself. What is really good to notice in our dreams are not so much the settings, like the images, but always the emotions behind uh, behind the events which is going on within the dream realms. I don't know if this gave you a little bit of a hint. If you seek a different angle to the answer, just uh, write it in the comment below. We will look at it. Yeah, it's kind of fun this, no? Then it's like communicating together. <laughs> I like it. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Is the psychosis a symptom of a blockage of the third eye or crown chakra? Isabella, the form that I see it, uh, no, not necessarily. A psychosis is when you lose grip of reality, right? So it actually happens for a lot of uh, very awake people, but who haven't found the safety and the grounded within oneself. So what happens is you completely lose groundation. And um, the images and pictures or beings or energies that you see is part of what exists, but not necessarily your world reality and not necessarily the outcome that there will be. So if you take a person, um, let's take uh, this example. Yeah. So if you take a person who uh, a sensitive, on a daily basis but don't know how to truly link to the feeling of self right who maybe have been through abuse or have been super scared in their life so the thing about feeling their own body their own self hurt and uh, it's more nice to fly away to other perceptions so what happens sometimes with for example also schizophrenia is that they see or hear voices 
with, uh, which is a vibrationally match to the suppression within their system. So for example, uh, they can see beings. So if there is an angel in here, which they are everywhere. So I see the angel, right? But if I have the fear, then what I will attract is maybe your dead person or I will see the, the energetic layer of fear before the angel. So my perception of this being would be this dark cloud falling after me. You can take it as if you have a bad day and you are sitting in the bus looking at people. And if you're feeling good and in love, then you are sending smiles to everyone. But if you are feeling scared or afraid of being abused, all you see is people staring at you. It's kind of the same, just on an energetic level. Uh, so back <laughs> to the simple answer to your question. No, I do not see it as a block of the third eye and not see it as a block of your crown chakra. I see it as over opening and not linked to your lower part in your body. Um, and you need to create a safe space within yourself. And learning with perception is your own. Connect to the heart. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Anouk. And hello to Rafi and Hella and, and everybody else. Oh my God, this is great. Hey, Christina, indeed. Uh, I couldn't be more, I couldn't agree more. Oh, I have to know how to open this one. Ah, I can't push the button. Ah, there. Couldn't agree more. Uh, you got to learn to use the gift that you are given and use them right, if it makes sense. Christina, bitte, it makes totally sense. We are all created different, in different colors, and with different skills, different gift, different flaws, which makes us so unique, right? So I really truly believe that what brings colors to life is that we are so different, is that we have these different skills on different, uh, places in life and it's so so important to fully embrace that um, and it's so unique right so in every sector in life we have creation of beauty and in every disorder is creation of beauty it is only in my perception a disorder as long as it's holding you back for feeling free within yourself or if you are damaging other people of course but that is a part of the learning so that is what we need to learn to deal with and reintegrate and transform from a burden into a gift are oh, you welcome Jacqueline hey uh, Isabella Isabella <laughs> how do you know if you are having a psychosis uh can you see if you have that i probably do because i ask no you don't have a psychosis uh <laughs> no you don't <laughs> so it's i can explain it best by saying it feels as if you're on a cliff and you're holding on uh, on the edge on the cliff and then you fall off so it's like you have the feeling of losing your mind. You don't know what is right and what is wrong. And you have no feeling of self anymore. Fear takes over or these, cons these big um, um, outcomes of how you think the world is or what will happen. But not linked or integrated in your system at all. If you have a psychosis, you can feel it as your energy go like... Dig, 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 but not in this, um, not as anxiety, because anxiety is more centered, but when it's a psychosis, it's all over the place and you are, part of you are not even conscious of what you're doing. Where in an anxiety attack, what you have mostly, uh, you are conscious about yourself, about your body, about the moment, about the fact that you are having this fear. But in a psychosis, parts of you are not conscious because you are so far out of yourself that you can even create damage to yourself or to others without being aware of it. 
Some people don't even remember it afterwards. Um, let's see. How do we connect with the light again? I feel it is uh, it. Uh, I feel it on t one time. Lisa min soil er lyst rammer mig. How how do we connect with the light again? You have to realize that you are always connected to the light because you are the light. The thing is that the pain or the suffering of your everyday life or the thoughts in your brain are overshadowing uh, your feeling of this light that you are. So it is really coming to the realization that you are it in every single moment of life. And it doesn't matter how shitty you feel, you are still this light. You need to learn to uh, integrate that knowledge so deep that that light is what, you, what drives you. And all the other struggles around it is just a part of the flow of life. But it doesn't define the who you are. So to fully connect with the light that you are, it, it, it's just, it's that. It's shifting from being the pain, searching for the light, to realize you are the light, but accepting the pain you need to go through in order of getting to wherever you're going. Uh, Yurian. Ah, I really am struggling a bit with this thing. Um, Yurian, how's the pigeon doing? Do you see her visit? as a site see see her visit as a site i don't know what the last part of your message mean but the pigeon is doing great i had a pigeon on my balcony and she uh, laid her eggs and it's so cute so i thought oh no maybe she left because she flied away and i didn't know the pigeons did that but she came back and uh, i gave her some food and some water and i look out the window once in a while but i don't want to get too close to her just because I feel she got scared, she's really overprotective. So she's just, uh, yeah, she's doing good. The kids are doing great. <laughs> uh, thank you, hey, hi, hi, there's a lot of hey's. <laughs> Lori, thank you, that was helpful. I uh, was also wondering if you could tell me something more about those dimensions you were focusing on in your dreams. It really depends who you are. And where you're traveling to. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Some people... Yeah, it really depends where you come from. And what you have to do. And what you are doing. And what you are sent there and here for doing. Um, hey, I don't know what happened. It just disconnected <laughs> all of a sudden. Um, so I lost all your questions. Uh, so the, if there is any body locking in, you really have to ask your questions once more. Mm -hmm. Hi guys! <laughs> I don't know, it just stopped all of a sudden. It said uh, couldn't record. So, if uh, any of you had questions, you need to answer them one more time because I did not read the rest of the questions. Also, I see that this one is already taking pretty long. Hey, Babs! Okay, so while I wait for you guys to log in again, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Facebook just thought she talked too long. Um, I will see you with other questions I have here. Okay, so the next question on this board while I'm waiting for you guys. Yes. How do you deal with the lack of trust? And feeling lack of love from my partner, who is used to have alcohol problems, but have been sober sober for many years. So, how do I deal with the lack of trust and the and the feeling of lack of love from my partner, who have had an alcohol problem for many years, but now are sober? 
Um, so when you have been through, when you have used substances like that for a longer period of time, you have developed a certain way of behaving, a certain way of being, and a certain way of navigating in uh, life, right? So he has patterns <laughs> in the way that he acts, in the way that he communicates, and in the way that he responds and reacts on whatever comes uh, are sent back to him. You, on the other hand, who probably maybe have been standing next to that while he was still using, uh, have all the fear when he sent out certain signals or when he closed down. So for you, what is reactivating every time that the shut off mechanism is triggered in him is that you have the fear of losing or the fear of him abusing again. So it is you two's pattern together that you need to learn to shift together. So the best thing is if you sit down with your partner and you talk about um, what you're triggering in each other and which pattern is going on. You need to realize when you are with somebody who has been an alcoholic for a longer period of time, uh, they most probably need to learn to find love within themselves and to themselves. So that you don't feel love for them <laughs> or from, from, from your partner to you, can very well have something to do with he may not feel it for himself yet so talk with him and figure out figure out where he is and what he's willing to work on within himself and you need to figure out within yourself what you're searching in him and what you're searching in life in general if you are the right place within yourself in this time frame Yeah. yeah, Maria is definitely linked to the moon energy. Definitely. It's um, this moon. <laughs> I've been feeling it for days. There's so much going on in the world at this moment. And it's just crazy. There's all these flows of different vibrations and different energies. And sometimes... I don't know what is up or what is down, but I really truly believe that just recenter in the heart and let whatever comes flow through your system and flow through yourself and you will be okay. I think it's really important to <clears throat> to say that in this time it's so needed that we <sighs> where we go to the space inside of ourselves and feel the the trust in our heart and the trust in our community unity worldwide that we truly believe that we can change these outcomes and we truly believe that we can create a world reality uh, with more peace and more oneness it is so needed in these times because there is so much going on and so much fear and anger and resistment and everything is losing up at the moment so on the contradictory other side, we need a big amount of trust and faith and togetherness to uh, balancing out. Um, is a uh, sick hindering your accession path? Helle, I do not know what this means. Sorry. Uh, Yurian. Okay, let me rephrase. Do you feel the pigeon came to tell you something? Well, maybe it just felt peace here and felt welcomed and felt loved. I definitely, uh, well, I loved it. I love it. And uh, it's beautiful. So much is happening, you know, like really weird stuff. <laughs> and this is one of the better. I really love it. Like the other day I lost my keys, but the angel found them. And yeah, and I burned out this thing. So, and today I accidentally ate the um, the soap, you know. It was not really, that was not nice. Like I am so healthy all the time. And then I eat washing soap. Of course, not on purpose. So... Yeah, this pigeon thing just really fills me with love. It's it's a good it's a good part. Uh, 
And there you are again. I asked before uh, about the dimension of dream travel and do you know if my dreams means like if I remember things uh, from those dimensions, does it mean I have to do something with it here? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, um, <laughs> most of the time, what you you ask if you have to do something with it here, but the truth is that it is already done. And the best way of looking into it is just to look into the emotionally patterns that stays with you in the morning. Often that is what you need to integrate and look into. And the rest of the traveling is just part of what is already created. And trust me, if there's something you need to do something with, it will keep appearing over and over again until the moment that you, uh, you work with it. You work it out. Hi, Moa. Hi, Heidi. Um, hey, first time. Welcome, Yolanda. It's my first time, too, doing this online stream. And, uh, and I'm sorry, it's a bit clumsy. I guess uh, I will get better at it. I'll get better at it. Okay, let's look into this question. Ah, oh, this is cute. Okay. Does everything have a soul? Let's say a rock, a tree, or a glass of water. Everything has consciousness. Uh, to describe a soul, a soul have a lot of consciousness and the stream is vibrating in a form that collects that consciousness into an emotional pattern um, where a rock, for example the stones, always have them here, they have a lot of conscious, co consciousness as well, they have a lot of memory, they've been around for centuries and they vibrate in the same energy form that they have always done. Where your soul uh, actually shifts in vibration and memory. It, it, um, how can I explain this? Everything is consciousness. That is, that is true. You can talk with stones. You can talk with trees. You can talk with water. You can link to the consciousness and the memories that they have. And reconnect to the part that you have already been a part of or want to reintegrate within yourself. Everything uh, is alive. There's nothing which is not alive on this planet. I would say that it's like plastic doesn't have a lot of consciousness. I cannot see emotionally memory in the plastic. I'm looking at a plastic ball at this second. Uh, but stones, water, wood, uh, what else do we have in here? Crystals, me, <laughs> hair. Okay. Do, do, do. Yes, Bob. Hi, awesome. You s this I sound of a Dutch woman instead of a Dane. It sounds like a Dutch woman. Well, I will not call me Dutch because my Dutch is like not existing. <laughs> ah, what happens with your body when you, you when you smoke e-cigarettes? Okay, so do you want the technical part or do you want the... <laughs> On the technical level, the physical level, it is not beneficial for your lungs to damp this thing inside of your lungs all the time. It is not a part of nature and it's not a part of how your body intended to get food or anything else like that inside of your system so internally if you look at it physically it's not beneficial for you it doesn't kill you but um, in a certain way and over time it can possibly bring harm to your physics but this is with a lot of stuff in our world reality at this moment. Like me drinking sulfo, it's also not really uh, smart. So um, if you look at it on an emotionally level or internally level, it really always depends on which dimension we're looking at. But there is this dimension saying, 
if you are 100% in the feeling of love and flow and what you do feels right, it doesn't harm you. But the thing is that most of the time when we do stuff like this, smoke the e-cigarette or whatever, it's not that you love the smoking part. It's not that you love whatever is put inside of your lungs. It's not that your body is asking for it. It is that you are fulfilling an emotionally need inside of yourself <laughs> in the only form that you know how to do it. So our, our um, home assignment could be to look into the emotionally... Um, pattern behind and re-realize which feeling does it give me what does it bring me when I smoke uh, this e-cigarette which emotion am I searching for and how can I possibly fulfill it in another way another thing is that it's really important that we not to have hard on ourselves we need to take one step at a time and in order of move we need to be okay with where we are within oneself um so step number one acceptance step number two um do i feel that it is healthy where i'm standing or do i have a desire somewhere to change i hope this made some sense to you uh okay <clears throat> this is getting so long <laughs> but i love it home quarantine is good okay hey lisa i have uh, often pressure on my ears has it something to do with my ear or in contact with the other side mm. it depends who you are but for you it is because you do a lot every day. You do a lot on many levels. And one of them is also on a brain level and a worrying level. So when you are too much going out of one way and you need to like... Then your ears do this thing. So your ears do it uh, at two points. This is one of the points where you need to like breathe deep and feel okay. What do I need to hear or listen to or feel in this exact moment? And that is the moment where you get the contact. So yes or no, you can say that it is uh, from the other side. It's the angels or the dead people or the guardians or whatever that give you a hint of stomping up and listening in the moment to what is for you to be heard. Okay. Isabella, you're gonna hate me for this one. But you ask, why am I longing for my twin fame and how to let go of becoming whole myself? So you're longing for the twin fame because you're not whole within yourself yet. <laughs> so then we are searching this other part of ourself. And as long as we don't perceive that part as a part of ourselves, we believe we need to find that part within another and therefore seeking the whole twin flame thing. Um, for your perception. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to make like this uh, line saying at 8 o'clock we're gonna finish. Even that I love this so much. This one is so much more fun when we actually are talking together instead of me just making these uh, videos on my own. Um... see these questions on this billboard is it possible for humans being hum, human beings to reincarnate as animals and the other way around so as everything is consciousness it means that you can be a part of everything ever created or everything that anything that ever will be created but the concept of your whole your whole uh, soul like your whole soul of uh, Danny or whatever <laughs> being incarnated into being a dog in your next life with that emotionally memory uh, with the full emotional me memory isn't the case but 
you taking part in wanting to have that experience of being the consciousness of a, an animal is definitely possible and it has been possible and it is possible even that you're here in your human form. That's one of the reasons why we can feel so connected to animals and we connect to their soul because either we we meet a part of ourself within that animal or a part of a loved one within that animal because a part of yourself or that loved one have chosen to take part in the consciousness of that animal. <laughs> okay, let's see, was there? Okay, can you advise me Qua work? What? Can you advise me qua work? I'm sorry, honeybee. I simply don't know what you mean. <laughs> okay. They were, it's cute. Like I have this long list of questions, but they're so long. So I'm trying to find the ones who are not so long to read until I get better in reading these things out. Um, is it important to have a high level of consciousness if you are a spiritual teacher? <sighs> so, <laughs> a rock has a high level of consciousness and water have a high level of consciousness. I think being a spiritual teacher is very much about how learning how to communicate out what you see without putting your stuff upon the others, but just bring it from a pure point of view. But the question is, is it important to have a high level of consciousness? And to be a spiritual teacher, it, re it really is a definition question because it really depends. Like now I'm looking into different uh, outcomes and, and people looking at this situation. So I have to say yes and no. Yes, because a spiritual teacher is here to teach <laughs> about spirituality, and consciousness. So if they do not walk the talk, then what they are teaching us is not something that will lift us up. It's something that may just level us where we are. And no, because that I believe that every single person we meet on our way can be teachers. And it doesn't, like I have met people uh, who from the outside might seem to not have a lot of consciousness, but if I look into the beauty of their soul, there is so much value hidden within that homeless people or um, people who've been through a lot or people who are not able to speak but they are expressing so much in their being so these high consciously <laughs> people become teachers but I do believe and I would love to if spiritual teachers would walk the talk that they are preaching and it is something for me also. It's something for all of us. We should just be so authentic that we can be to ourselves and therefore to each other. Um, yeah. Uh, Maike, I dreamt a few months ago my aunt was sick and will die. Now she passed away last Wednesday. Ah! Oh. Well, um, a lot of humans <laughs> have this. Uh, was it a predicting dream? It scared me uh, in the time she wasn't ill. It scared me in the time she wasn't ill. You shouldn't be scared. So our subconscious or our predictions sometimes are preparing us to what is to come. It can be the um, situation itself or it can just be the emotionally pattern that lies behind the situation that we saw in the dream. Um, so, <laughs> so often, like for example, my mom has this also, I don't know if you're still there, mom, but my mom has this thing also, it is when you dream about something that is about to happen, it is that your body is preparing for it in a form, but it is also that in an other world reality, it has already happened. So you are reliving it in this moment to integrate it here and i know that sounds complicated but i promise you it is not so the short answer to your question is um is it a predicting dream yes 
<laughs> but don't be scared because you are not supposed to change that outcome. If you were supposed to change the outcome, you would feel it when you woke up in the morning. You would feel this urge in your body to to do. Um, and if you only feel fear, then that is not the case. I hope this made a little bit of sense. Um, Christina, your wisdom makes so much sense to me. You just made my day. <laughs> Yay! And you helped me to do more with myself and my spirituality. I, I, I have to push this see more button, but it just, my fingers are too fat, I guess. It doesn't work. Ah. Uh, so I can be my real and true self and feel peace within myself. I love that, Christina, because you just you are such a beautiful being, <laughs> and I uh, you shine out so much light, and you deserve to just yeah to just feel free within yourself and i can really understand it is a struggle it is for all of us no matter who we are we cannot say that one is more or less than another it just is life right we have to re re realizing who we are and when we think we know then we are ready to get the next knowing or the next learning and then it's a whole new journey to come closer to whatever next is for us to experience and to become one with i believe that nothing is ever settled you know everything is flow so so are we the way that we develop through life is to not hold on to what we think we are but to be open to realize and see what we have always been so thank you for this coming christina i got colon problems uh, for so many years parasites and tired and many regular things uh, what is the main thing to focus <clears throat> see more button focus on for me from Carmen um, okay I will just speak for the column okay like because uh, I just that's the most easy way to do this I will go inside column are saying <laughs> I have to deal with emotions through everyday life I'm not able to express myself, so I cramp up. I'm allowing myself to eat myself up. Every simple, sim every single emotion that I get in that I have to handle there is too much. I try to eat up instead of shining out. I also am holding on to a bit of bitterness. Bitterness and sadness, and I lost the faith in that it can ever be differently. So... Uh, if I tap out of being the column, <laughs> it is uh, the way that you have been dealing with emotions and the way that the world has felt very hard to you uh, during your, the start of your life and also the last year, especially if you feel stressed or, or feel uh, too exposed for energy surrounding you. So the best thing you can do is bring a lot of softness into yourself, put a lot of focus on well-being not in order of fixing yourself but in order of whatever makes you feel happy whatever makes you feel flow it's only eating what brings colors to yourself and your system uh, the focus for you right now is peace you need a lot of peace around you <laughs> and you need to just be with yourself long enough to actually hear the part of you there need a voice um, I can hear the voices screaming in your head with all the, with, with all the talking down to yourself <laughs> because of this column problem and other stuff. But you need to dive deeper into the core of the emotional issue. Um, so I hope this helped you a little bit and you understood, um, could relate or resonate that it resonated within you. How I, uh, the expression was of your column. The parasite, as you were saying, I just see it as an eater in there, you know. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to be a part of you forever. Talk with it, explain it, talk with it, listen to why it was there, understand why it was needed. Ask yourself if you're ready to let it go and uh, together become agreeing upon 
letting go of each other. On a physical level, yeah, eating clean, lots of water, you do the whole cleaning thing already. It's important to not overdo, so your column also get to a point where it can relax. Because sometimes we do too much, and when we do too much, we actually do more harm than we do uh, the other way around. Hi, San Sanela, which is your new name. <laughs> Exactly, you're so right. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Okay, guys, I think I just hit the one hour of our first live stream, separated in two. Um, I'm, of course, going to save this one on the page and you are fully free to, to share it wherever you wish to share it. I would also really love to hear if you like this way of the Q&A's or if you prefer that we do it uh, with the Q&A's on, on this thing. So please let me know in the comment below. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for being with me uh, right now, especially in this Corona times, because I am just here all by myself. <laughs> so, well, and all the angels, of course. So thank you for today and I will see you next week. Doodoo! -doo.